So why do I use uh, sand and PVA to base my miniatures? Well, um, the main reason is it produces what I consider a better finish. Okay, so these bases here, the Soviet uh, rifle teams, uh, they're based with spackle and it looks like uh, somebody's pressed some you know, gravelly stuff into the, the bases um, to sort of, you know, give it a natural look. Um, but you can you can see these, you know, whether the, the spackle or fill has been spread out around, uh, around the bases, you can see these uh, indentations, and especially over here, you can see it's not sort of uh, covering the, uh, the, the, the gap between the base of the miniature and the plastic base itself particularly well. Um, and I just... I see this on a lot of miniatures, and it it, it kind of brings a uh, a base of infantry down for me. Okay, so in contrast, this is one of my uh, sand and PVA jobs. Um, you'll note that the uh, the transition between the the bases of the minis and the uh, the plastic base itself is pretty smooth. Um, yeah, as you, I've also got a bit of a different technique for for distributing the flock on mine. And um, I'm probably going to enhance this base, well, this uh, company's bases later on when lockdown's over by uh, adding um, some tufts with uh, different coloured flowers just to uh, sort of give it the Ukrainian summer feel. Um, yeah, anyway, so um, that's why I, I like the, uh, the, the, you know, the sand and PVA method for, for uh, making bases. So the first step is to uh, mix up some uh, PVA. Um, and the reason I say mix up, you could use it neat, but um, it uh, doesn't produce quite as good a um, result as it doesn't flow off the top of the, the, the model base itself particularly well. Okay, so I'm just dumping a bit of PVA into the tray. Um, in this, this case, it's just a, a cut down bottom of a plastic pill bottle. Um, and I'm going to add in a bit of water. Uh, this has got some flow aid in it, but it doesn't necessarily need flow aid. This is just to thin it down a bit and to make it a bit more um, watery. So it flows around the feet of the models easier and um, also around the, uh, uh, the base. So I'll... Give it a good mix um, and come back after it's nicely mixed. Oh, incidentally, uh, the uh, I just haven't washed my brush out properly from the the last job it was doing, and so there's a bit of brown paint in the in the brush, which is why the water's gone all brown. And so this will give you an idea of the sort of tub that I use for my basing. Um, this was just acquired from one of the local beaches. It's a fine sand, a really fine sand. So each of the, the grains is about uh, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 of a millimetre across. Um, so it produces a nice uh, fine uh, basing effect. So I've thinned down the PVA and as you can see it's uh, pretty thin now. Um, no big globs. It's uh, it's got quite a bit of viscosity left still, so it's not too thin. Um, Rightio, so I'll attempt to dem demonstrate, uh, firstly, on a Soviet infantry stand. So, usually, firstly, I cover most of the base. Right up to the edges of the uh, metal bases. If you've got the newer indented uh, uh, infantry bases, it's probably going to be a little bit easier. Uh, but this technique still works just the same. Okay, getting it. So after I've got around most of the bases, I just gently try and get up to the feet and uh, in between the, uh, the infantryman's legs. Just finish off with a dab of glue between uh, between their feet, and uh, give it a couple of uh, seconds to uh, sort of even out, and then 
I'm going to move over here to the sand bucket and I'm just dropping the, the, the base in I'll pick up some of the sand I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top and what you want to do is make sure that it's fairly deep and that way it'll all absorb into the uh, the sand will absorb into the PVA nice and evenly and um, we'll fill in those gaps between the uh, their feet and um, right up onto the base Ooh, needs a bit more over the back there cool rightio so if you're doing 28 mil stuff like uh, yeah 40k stuff yeah I'm just gonna do the same trick here you'll notice that I've got her on a uh, this is the old model and um, yeah I've got her on a MDF 32 wheel base because the old metal models fall over quite easily and the bigger your base the less likely that is to happen okay just try and get get it so the camera can see a bit better now obviously with uh, sort of a hero base especially for 40k and such you want to make it sort of look a little bit special and most of the uh, the new miniatures are coming out with you know pre pre-designed rubble on the bases so um, I'm just going to add in a bit of a uh, bit of my own rubble there's just uh, plaster cast um, I think it was I think it's her starts mold um, pieces so I'm going to add some of this to her base just to just to give it sort of that uh, heroic feel war-torn 41st millennium and all add a bit more uh, PVA around the base of the there to fill in that gap oops other piece is sliding off that's all right we'll just reposition it in a second okay okay Righty -o. Oh, I'm gonna look a bit more impressive if it looks like she just leapt over that rubble okay so we'll go back over to the to the sand bath and we'll do exactly the same trick righty -o. now I usually leave them for um, uh, sort of five minutes in the uh, the sand just to uh, clear up any um, well so that the maximum PVA absorbs into the sand that uh, you've put over the top and so that you get that nice even finish now as I put Jane's art in there I was a little bit worried that we might have got a bit of a lip no we haven't okay so I'll just carry on I'll cover that back up again if you push if you get a um, sort of like a wave of PVA because you've not put the model in the bath properly uh, you know uh, square flat whatever um, you can get sort of a, a, a lip on one edge um, and if you do get that just just um, get your finger and just just gently even it out okay and we'll pick up this Soviet base and as you can see a nice even finish around the feet you can barely see the the transition between the uh, the the old um, between the metal base and the plastic base however there is just a little little bit of a lip just on the back of this model here so um, when I come to uh, doing my uh, um, flocking I'll just um, add in a bit of extra flock you know static grass flock there to cover up that transition and make it look all smooth and natural cool I don't know, it's been two or three minutes. Um, however, after after shaking off the, the excess, I've noticed that there's a little bit of uh, excess sand that's uh, got stuck to the edge of the base because I've uh, let the PVA dribble just over the edge. So while it's still wet, you can just brush off the worst of that with your thumb. And I'll just make sure that there's no other bits. There's one there, one there. Yeah, cool. 
we'll sort it. One thing I didn't mention was that um, when you when you put the uh, the base in the sand bath basically and uh, cover the PVA with sand, only leave it in there for sort of two or three minutes, um, just long enough for the uh, the sand to sink into the PVA and um, uh, you know uh, absorb all the PVA into itself. Um, once that's done, pull them out and let them dry because they'll dry much quicker out of the sand bath than they will in it. The other thing is the I didn't mention was that um, when you're making making up your your glue mix, part of the reason for adding the water is uh, not just to thin it down so it spreads easier, but also to speed up the drying time. Now this sounds counterintuitive. Um, Adding water and speeding up the drying time, I hear you say, that that doesn't make logical sense. Well, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a thing with glue, uh, especially PVA, um, and that's uh, something called the skin. Now, when you use um, unwatered down PVA um, and glob it on thick, um, the surface skins very quickly and... PVA, when it's in its dried state, is um, impervious, well, it, it's it's waterproof. So um, once the skin's formed, it uh, the skin actually provides a barrier which stops the rest of the PVA underneath the skin from drying out. So if you um, add water to it, it thins it down such that the skin takes longer to um, form and the water itself has a greater chance of evaporating before a, a solid skin is formed and um, yeah so you'll actually get a faster drying time out of thinned down PVA than you will from um, neat PVA especially when it's laid on thick. Um, if it's laid on thinly uh, of course the thick stuff will dry probably slightly quicker than the thinned down stuff but um, yeah, that's that's just a little uh, tidbit for you. Um, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I hope this was sort of semi-informative. And um, yeah, I know it's pretty basic, but um, yeah, we'll just add this to the channel and see how it goes. <laughs>